Greetings. In this section, we will look at identity management with Zend Authentication backed up by Zend LDAP. I will go into LDAP and dedicated identity management service in general as opposed to a generic relational database in order to promote the idea that in a real business world, this is what you will be expected to do. When a PHP community is sometimes criticized for not being enterprise ready, the lack of directory services is one of the criteria that they're often referring to. Many small businesses with even as little as 10 computers will have some form of directory server to manage them. And when you're going for a company that has above 30, 50 and definitely above 50, you will absolutely face a situation where any application that you deliver to them must be integrated with their existing user databases. Those user databases are not relational databases like Postgres or MySQL. They are directory servers that are in a form of something like Active Directory. Or maybe they use something from Oracle or open source such as, in our example, Apache DS. All major software vendors like Atlassian or JetBrains have an option to integrate with Active Directory for logon. Aside from the obvious reason of having a centralized user management infrastructure that is shared across any application, we get benefits of single sign-on and security. The computers the employees log on at do not actually have their own identity. Instead, they typically belong to some kind of domain. So when the user logs in, they're not actually logging into the computer, they're logging into the entire network. Once they're logged in and the computer got the ticket for that session, they can now access any resource over the entire network without re-entering the credentials ever again. This is similar to when you sign in with your Google account and then you can access YouTube, Google Plus and whatever. Same way in an office, once you log on to your computer, you have access to all of the office resources, including the application we're about to write. Another reason why this is so critical in an office environment is a security where the domain controller that authorizes your login session will also verify that the computer has all of the updates, it has no viruses, and administrators get to push their own configuration onto users' desktop session. Identity management is not used for software alone, but also for hardware. Even at my residence, I have my wireless access point configured to perform authentication with the Active Directory server. So in order for my phone or my laptop to access my home network, I have to actually log in on a device to my domain controller and the username that I'm logging in as must be a part of the wireless group. So that's as far as the corporate world, but even for small projects, having a directory server for identity management as opposed to relational database makes your life incredibly easier. The ease of user, group, and permission management in an LDAP server comes from the fact that it is inherently tree-based database. Unlike in a relational database with flat two-dimensional tables where you would have to do awkward joints to emulate the idea of one row being a child of another row and then apply permissions to that group of rows, unlike in a relational database with two-dimensional tables where you have to do awkward joint statements to emulate the idea of a hierarchy structure, emulate the idea that one row from one table is a child of another row in another table, which is physically impossible. Here, the idea of hierarchy is very natural because everything is physically stored in a tree. And if that wasn't enough, every object in a database can have membership of another object. My test environment isn't that elaborate. So we will use assistance of Google images to see what kind of use cases we have for categorization and tree layout. Here is what a typical environment would look like. Here, the company is broken down into several departments, design, engineering, finance, 
human resources, uh, marketing, and so on. And each of those departments in turn is broken down into teams. We have consultants in engineering, we have consultants in design, we have consultants in IT, but also IT has help desk. So right away, we have an entire company layout in a very natural order. As for permissions, they are also very naturally expressed in terms of groups as well as individual permissions. So I can go to any particular user, I can see who is he member of, I see that I'm a user in domain in general, I'm a part of my wireless network and I have access to Team Foundation server for some software development utilities. Every time I see my clients try to emulate this in a relational database, I just want to scream at them and do very bad things to them because this is just so much easier. I will still go into relational database identity management just because there are solutions out there that already use them and you do have to understand how they do and just to show you how difficult and annoying it is as opposed to this way. So here we got a scenario where some users have already been established. They're sitting in an organizational unit that they already belong to. We don't want to change that. And now we want to get our application to use this. The administrator may decide that not every user should have access to it for whatever reason, be it licensing or it's just it's not their job to touch it. And of course, we ourselves are going to want some kind of group-based permissions. We're going to have administrators for our site, obviously not the network administrator, just administrator for our application. Regular users for application, uh, maybe developers, maybe QA, all of those are going to be individual groups, so we have to store them somewhere. That sounds like a good use for organizational unit. And we'll call ours ZFT. It's just a logical container that makes it easy to organize objects. Inside of it, we will make a group for ZFT users. So anybody who is a member of this group is going to be able to log into our application. To assign people to it, we can go into its properties, say members, and I'm going to add myself to it. For the benefit of those following using Apache DS server, I will make an organizational unit underneath that domain name. I will make one generally for users at all. So all users are just going to go here. And I'm going to make one for the Zen framework tutorial related objects. LDAP is very heavy on abbreviations. So far we've seen two, we've got a DC for the main component and we've got OU for organizational unit. To emulate what I have in my Active Directory setup, I will make a username for myself underneath OU users. I will pick iNetwork person. So much like in object-oriented programming, in LDAP we have a concept of a class that defines what an object should be, and then we make an instance of that object. RDN is a relative distinguished name and represents a path from the topmost root of the LDAP server towards my target object. Question here is, what field do I pick from the iNetorg class to identify this object within this hierarchy. I will go with UID, which I will also use for logging in. So this will be my username on a website. I will just use that. So now we see that the object I create is sitting as UID Sasha underneath organizational unit users, which is underneath the main component DS, the main component, my domain name, the main component, the root of the internet. Here it is complaining I'm missing some fields. 
for CN, which is common name. I will put my name, full name here. It doesn't matter what I put in here. This is like my display name. SN is surname. I personally won't use this anywhere, but class needs it. And I want to add password for myself so I can log in when the time comes for that. Here we have password storage. It's not convenient. We don't even have to worry about our own password storage implementation that we do when we deal with relational databases. The password goes. It's getting hashed automatically. That's really nice. And we have the user account created. Eventually we will make a control panel to do this for the administrators from the page but this is to emulate an existing environment that you may walk into. Or even a new one. If your customers do not already have a directory server, please make one for them as opposed to using a relational database. To finish off making this look the same as my Active Directory setup, making a group. Here it's called group of names as opposed to just group in the other one. Here I want to use CNN, common name, that is a pretty common field to identify your objects by. This one is ZFT users. It's telling me what do I want to put in there. And I'm going to add myself underneath it. There you go. I'm one of the members and you can add more member fields to it. I can just say like member and then it will show up down here so these are not unique by any means finish that off unfortunately unlike active directory the default schema for users does not have a member of field so it's going to be pretty annoying to figure out later who the user belongs to but we still can easily see who belongs under the group. So we could possibly use that later. We could also extend the schema, uh, but that's quite a bit of extra work. Or you could be like me and focus on Active Directory, maybe get a trial version of server 2016 or 2012 and set it up. To figure out how to set that up, you can check out videos from Eli the Computer Guy on his playlist for server 2012 Active Directory series. I'm not even going to attempt competing with his tutorial on doing this. He does a wonderful job breaking down the concept of installing and configuring Server 2012 and related components to get the directory server going. If you want to use it, just watch him do it. On the final note, before we go into coding, we need to actually know how to query these objects so that we can use them in our authentication adapter. You will see this is yet another reason to use directories instead of tables for hierarchical queries. First, it will be useful if we view advanced features in Active Directory side, and we can look at the attribute editor that becomes available when we do that. In a Windows world, the field that is used for me to perform my login operation is SAMA account. But we'll also see user principal name, which shows my email-like address and the rest of my names. But the one we're interested in for login here is this one, because this is what I use to log into my computer. And we will use that also as a single sign-on target eventually. So once we log in here, we don't have to log into our application anymore. But as a bonus, Zen Framework also knows that this is the name of the field that should be used for user authentication and it's also giving us the query that we need to do it so we're going to use it to test whether our lookups work to check that query out we will go to find custom search advanced put it in here for the account name i'm going to put in my name and we got our user so the query operation is really simple. You just specify the attributes or fields that you are searching the object by. 
or you can do the full DN that we saw earlier, the distinguished name that builds the path from the root towards the object. Now a big different set of fields from the Apache DS because it had different schema. And so our search is going to be slightly different, but not a whole lot different. We're going to go to search and for filter, instead of some account name, we will put our UID and for object class, it's going to be inetorg person. Do a search there, and we got our user return. For the record, how do I know what fields are available? What are these default schemas? These objects and these classes are actually internet standards. The particular one we're looking at is X500 standard for logging in and identity management. So here we see what CN is. CN is common name, contains the name of an object, simple enough. DN or DC domain component. And then for the login, I know that I can use UID, a system login name associated with an object. So you can see all of the available fields here. And of course you can extend it, but that's the default. Not everybody unfortunately follows the standard. That's typical with standards. Here's a standard, everybody should use it. And then nobody really uses them. So some follow it closer than others. As we've seen, the Apache DS follows it pretty closely. Well, Microsoft Active Directory, not so much. However, I could say one of the reasons what don't follow it as much is it lacks some useful details, such as, as we've seen, what group does the user belong to? So as we use these, we will end up having to actually break the standard because it doesn't really work very well. But if you want the information, what does abbreviation mean? What is O, what is OU, what is CN, what is whatever? This is a pretty good place to start. This is also a great inspiration place if you ever get stuck on how to name your stuff. So if you want to create a user object and you're unsure how to name your fields or your group fields or any other object, this is a nice place to look at how the industry labels common data fields.